crossroads of America has moved about 10 miles to the west of the famed Brickyard to the 6 tenths mile Indianapolis Raceway Park short track for a 200 lap NASCAR Bush Series slugfest. The Kroger 200 has a rich 20 years in a hard-nosed vendor match in competition on this tight flat oval where by the end of the night the tempers could be as hot as the 91 degree weather. Huge crowd on hand at Indianapolis Raceway Park just outside of the Circle City getting set for tonight's 21st annual Kroger 200 NASCAR Busch Series race. Starting lineup, Greg Biffle won the pole in qualifying, but he's going to employ a little known, but a long time NASCAR rule to start on the outside of the front row. On the inside of row two, Stacy Cobb in his first Busch Series race here. Scott Riggs on the inside of row three, his first Busch Series race here. See Kenny Wallace, one of the drivers who's been shuttling back and forth between the Brickyard and here. He'll start inside of row number four in tonight's race. Jack Sprague starting on the outside of row number seven. Glenn Jarrett's on pit road with more on him. Well, Alan Jack Sprague has had seven career starts here at IRP, but all of them came in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. He's had some success here, winning two of those seven starts. Tonight, he starts 14th in his favorite car, the one that picked up his only Bush Grand National victory here earlier this year in Nashville. Jack Sprague could be a man to watch. Joining me on pit road tonight, here's Ralph Shaheen. Well, Glenn, last week, Hank Parker Jr. picked up his second career Bush Grand National victory at Pikes Peak. In fact, it was the first win in the Bush Series for Dodge. You would think Hank would be happy, but he's not, because a lot of people are telling Hank it wasn't a legitimate win since his new victories have come due to fuel mileage. Hank's a little upset about that, rightly so. He plans on correcting that here tonight by getting a good, strong win on a short track. Alan, he'll roll off 17. All right, let's look through the rest of the starting lineup for tonight's race. There is Johnny Sauter driving for the team that won the event a year ago, and Kevin Harvick was behind the wheel of that produced. Carl Godin, another driver that's here in double duty. He's going from here over to the Speedway, back over here. Add Mike Wallace to that list also. He starts back on the inside of row 14. Mike got here just in time to qualify that car earlier tonight. Ricky Hendrick will take, I'm sorry, I will yep. take the last qualified position. And the guys back in provisional land. 43 were here. There are no failed to qualifies on the list tonight. 43 will start this Kroger 200. One more pace lap before we go green tonight. What a huge crowd on hand around this little six-tenths of a mile track. And this is the pole sitter, as the graphic says. And Tony, he chose the outside. Wise choice? I think it's a very wise choice. There's a lot of sanctioning bodies around the country that have a rule that on the initial start, the gentleman that earns the pole sitting position has the option of taking the inside line or the outside line on the start. And IRP being a track that the groove is really in the middle to the upper half of the racetrack, it gives the, the starting position on the outside a, a much bigger advantage. You keep, you keep the guy on the pole pinched down and gives you a much, much better run off the corner. By the way, if you're wondering at home, that is rule 9-5-B in the NASCAR Bush Series rule book. So. It actually is in the rule book. It actually <laughs> is in the rule book. Got to read that thing once in a while. There's Piffle's championship rival Jason Keller now on the inside of row number one. Even though we qualified steady invested it. Now we'll see if Biffle actually makes me look like I actually know what I'm talking about or if he's yeah. gonna embarrass me tonight. <laughs> All right, set to go. 200 laps, 137.2 miles. It's the 21st Kroger 200 in this car bush series racing from Indianapolis Be Raceway ready. Park. Here they come for the start. Ready, ready, green flag, still inside barely. Oh, oh we're in trouble. Todd Bodine gets turned around right at the start finish line. All right, nail it, Todd, we're all right. He's trying to get it fired up. No caution. We stay under the green, and Greg Biffle will get the jump from that outside lane. Now the hard part's Todd Wood Hunt sitting here hoping to get a caution there. He's sitting there waiting to see if he could coax the starter into throwing the caution out, but uh, I don't think that's going to help him here. He's going to be three-quarters of a lap down now trying to get caught back up. Let's check it out. Coming down for the start. Bobby Hamilton Jr., the 25 car, just did not get a very good start. And I think Randall LaJoy got in the back of Todd Bodine and turned him around. Lucky he didn't hit that inside wall. There you go. It was the red car. Somebody about two cars in front of Hamilton Jr. on that inside row is the one that didn't go. Yeah, you can see actually, you see Bobby move down and then it put Todd at an angle so that, that when he did get hit, it actually got, he was already sideways to start with. Todd in 43rd spot, about three quarters of a lap down to leader Greg Biffle. 
Well, that's giving up 20 spots. Very qualified 23rd did Todd Bodine, and as you said, now running 43rd. Yeah, you know, spent all that time shuffling back and forth on the helicopter today, even made it back in time for the driver's meeting. Did everything he needed to do to keep his qualifying spot. And lost it on the first lap. Glenn? This is just another week in the uh, miseries of Todd Bodine. Since he won the race at Kentucky back in June, he has had finishes in the last five races of 26, 27. He threw a second in there, and then 32nd and 37. So, man, they're on a wrong kind of a roll. Looking at this back, uh, we got Mike McLaughlin there. there in the 18 car. He is in 11th spot. This is just outside the top 10. And Jamie McMurray in the 27th car is trying to get that outside line to work. Inside line, I should say. Greg Biffle leads. Jason Keller is second. They've put a little gap on Stacy Compton in third. Then you've got Ashton Lewis in fourth and Scott Reed in fifth. That's how they've shaken out here in the opening laps. Different lines there on those top two. Very much so. This track, when they repaved it, I can't remember how many years ago they repaved this racetrack, but it used to be that it was step had about four different degrees of banking, and you had to run clear up by the outside on the wall. When they repaved the track, everybody had to do get uh, the guesswork started. Nobody knew exactly where they needed to be on the track. There's not a bunch of different degrees, and guys can run on the bottom, the middle, or the top of the racetrack and just basically go wherever their car needs to work. And it looks like right now that the leaders are trying to figure out exactly where their car <laughs> needs to go. We've been watching Hank Parker Jr. and Kevin LePage almost making contact off between one and two. And here comes Tony Raines and goes blowing by both of them in a 33. A little opportunistic racing there on Raines' part in that 33 car. The hard part for these drivers tonight is they start the race with the with the sunshine still out. This track has a lot of heat in it right now. As the sunshine goes down and the temperatures cool off, now their cars are going to change. So to start the race off, you, you, they may not have the perfect handling car right at the beginning because they don't want to get their car to where they can adjust it to where it's going to be good at the, late, the later stages of the race. So you may see a lot of guys that their cars may not work good at the beginning, but they'll be really good at the end. Flag. We're back underway. Ooh, Greg Biffle up on the move. Here goes Keller for the lead. Clear. Biffle with a big slip in the middle of one and two. Didn't get the tires clean? Evidently, but Ben hasn't you called it. He's been flirting with that wall all night, and whether the car went in and pushed because the tires weren't cleaned off or what, it definitely cost him a spot. Take another look. One lap ago. Biffle takes the green flag, he goes down the corner up to the high lane like he's been going, but all of a sudden he gets too high, right up against that wall, and got in, that, got in the debris up there and he would not turn, had to back off the throttle, give away that lead. So Jason Keller's out in front. The one thing he did do though, he, he did not hit the fence, which didn't hurt the fenders or anything like that, so he did do a good job keeping it off the fence. Now Biffle feeling some heat from Scott Riggs, who's ducking and dodging around his back bumper, trying to get second. took the green flag in place, quickly moved up to third. Here he comes, taking a look. And again, the 10 car, the Nesquik car, this is his first trip here to the IRP in a NASCAR Bush Series car. He yet has run a truck here. One time. But Scott Rich has been a lot of places he's not been before in a Bush car and been fast this year. And he is fast right now. He is Jason Keller's teammate, the race leader. It almost reminds me of Jason Keller when he's along behind Biffle early in the race. On the inside, trying to get by that 60 car. Uh, while they kind of hold station for a second, let me reset the guys who put it under the caution. Jamie McMurray, Hank Parker Jr., Jack Sprague, Hermie Sattler, Casey Mears, the uh, Lowell Bennett, 22, Larry Foyt was in, Mike Wallace came to pit road, Gary Earnhardt stopped. Ron Hornaday came in. Butch Miller. Ryan Vickers came in and Ricky Hendricks stopped under the caution flag. Those are the lead lap cars who picked. One of them was McMurray who was in 12th at the time of his pit stop. By the way, Ricky Hendrick came back down pit road as the green flag was waving. Oh man, we see Jamie McMurray in the 47. That's the blue and white car. Green and white. It's some heavy traffic as he's trying to work 
back to the front with those fresh tires. Ron Hornaday right in the middle of the screen, the red and white yellow numbered car. Those that guys like to say, cautions breed cautions. <laughs> this would be why. Yeah, these folks are trying their best to wreck. They just haven't found the perfect spot for it yet. Oh, there we go. Tony Range on the move. He had moved up from 20 to 11 before the caution flag. 10th and 9th, right there for Reigns in that 33. And Riggs, he keeps trying in that 10 car to get by Biffle. 57 cars pulled out about a second and three quarters in front of Greg Biffle. And he's on. Can you set your car up to run that flatter part of this racetrack? Well, it's, it seems like, you know, typically you want to run right in the middle, it seems like here. But if your car is not right, then you have to move to adjust. But that's the good thing. The drivers can actually bring themselves back into the equation a little more and move around, do some things driving-wise, adjust their line and adjust the, the shape of the corner. They can diamond the corner off. They can do a lot of things in the car that we can't do at a lot of the other racetracks that we run. And that's the great thing about short track racing. It puts more of the driver back into it. So they can actually do a lot of things that they wouldn't do at some of these other tracks that themselves out. <laughs> they might have found the spot to wreck. No, they might have gotten by with it. I don't know how in the world they did that, but maybe. This is for 19th place. Hank Parker Jr. in the 36, last week's winner, and Jamie McQuarrie in the 27th. And if Alan not told you it was for 19th, and you watch that battle, you think it was for first. In their mind, it is for first, because these are the, the first two guys that uh, came in and got tired, so they're looking at it from the standpoint that if there's another caution and they stay out, they might be leading the race, so they got to be careful there. John Wood in the number nine car. I should say old, young John Wood in the nine car, working on his fellow Virginian, Stacy Compton. Oh, man, did you see him? They have a brakes on that nine car. The nose looked like it jumped down or five inches. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, caution is out for a hard six-car crash in turn one. Hank Parker Jr., the winner last week, will not win tonight because he drives the GNC car away from the crash. But Shane Meal is involved, Mike Harmon, Kevin LePage, and Hermie Sadler. Ron Hornaday was also involved in the beginning of it. He has driven away. All right, here we go. Tony down in turn one. Hornaday on the inside of Shane Meal. He locked that brake down that left front. We saw the smoke, but he couldn't stop in time. Made contact with Shane Meal, and around he went. And that starts what we call a good old-fashioned yard sale. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of parts for the auctions. And it looks like Hornaday is really more important, worried more about Hank Parker than he is Shane Meal there. But when he gets down there, then he realizes he's committed. Shane's coming down a little bit. He does lock up fronts, and there's nowhere for him to go but flip Shane in the back. He and Shane Meal had bumped in turn three, the preceding half lap. Then when they came off of four, they were three wide and kind of rubbed a little sheet metal, and then it came down to this in turn one. On board with Jack Sprague. Let's see if he gets through. Well, it looks like he did. And the 36 car of Hank Parker Jr. Man, look at the damage to the field's car. He has had a problem with the brakes locking up all night. And I think when he got down the corner and really had to use the brakes, that they locked up and caused the car to spin. Hermie, there's Hermie Sadler out of his car. You saw Parker Jr. and Shane Meal drive away. Kevin LePage, I saw climb from his car. And NASCAR, there is such a mess down there. They have thrown the red flag, stopped the cars up in turn four until they can get this cleaned up and check on all the drivers. And that's probably a, a, a really good, good call because there's so much metal down there inside turns one and two. These guys will be running through lap after lap in the pace car. You might as well just stop it and let them, let them clean it up. So the race red flagged here at lap number 61. Here's another look. And there you see the contact. Now watch from the left as the other cars pile in. Oh, Mike Harmon in the 44, hard contact. And then that was Kevin Grubb in the uh, the yellow car on the right side of the screen that went up over him. So make it a seven car accident.
And right there, I guess the 12 car might have gotten in the back of the 36 car. I thought maybe the brakes locked up, but Curry Earnhardt might have just touched the 36 in the back and causing him to spin. The red flag has been withdrawn. We're back under the yellow, and here come the leaders on the road at Indianapolis Raceway Park. What is likely to be their only stop of this Kroger 200. Jason Keller, Scott Riggs, Greg Biffle, John Wood, and Jay Sauter are the top five as they come to the attention of their crews. Ralph? Jay Sauter hasn't exactly been real happy with the handling of his race car, even though he's been running up near the front of it. It's been a little bit loose. It was really loose in qualifying, but they got a little bit better. They're going to change some tires, put some fuel in it, and they think they should be able to get him from here, Glenn. Well, Ralph, even though Jason Keller was leading the race, his car was a little tight. They're going to take a pound of air pressure out of both the front tires and maybe a round of wedge out there. We're talking about that. I haven't seen him do that yet. And Greg Biffle, who beat Keller out. Keller had a lot of trouble on the left side there. The crew did. Biffle, on the other hand, was very loose. They were putting a half a pound of air pressure in the right front, taking a half a pound of air pressure out of the right rear to try to fix his loose condition. Jason Keller's team did have some difficulties. Ron Hornaday is going to come off the road first, followed by Scott Riggs, then Biffle, then Jason, then Jason Keller. Mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy. Track position is so important. And there we see the 21 car leaving the pits. Jason Keller barely gets down in front of the 9 car. Look at Biffle on the grass to the inside of Riggs. Now the tires haven't got high. He didn't pick it up. Well, that's a tough, tough break there for Keller, because now he's going to make up all that track position that he had before. Getting set for the restart at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Jamie McMurray is the leader. Butch Miller is second. Third in the 22 car is Lowell Bennett in his second ever Bush Series race. Those three did not pit. Oh, and Bennett did not get a big good start in that 22. Hornaday up there in the 26 trying to get by on the inside. Lowell Bennett, 44-year-old from Nina, Wisconsin. He's the late model sportsman champion at Slinger Speedway up in Wisconsin the last couple of years. Oh, and we see the 10 car Riggs trying to lean on Bennett just a little bit. Here comes Biffle. Boy, Lowell, they just keep coming, don't they? Checking out the restart here. See those guys get going, but the 22 of Lowell Bennett just, well, he finally got it going. It's like those guys left before he thought they were going to. Experience. Experience, yes. Jamie Murray is leading. Butch Miller is second. There are the top two. Remember that it stopped earlier back at lap 39. Stayed on the racetrack this time. Greg Biffle is in fifth place. Just behind him, Jason Keller in the 57 and John Wood in the 9. Right in six, seven spots away from that 22. And Wallace also there in the Stacker 2 car, the 48. I know Lil Ben is a pretty nice guy, but knows he's got a child dog. So do I. Quarters racing on the backstretch. Just behind these three, Greg Biffle is slicing his way through traffic. He almost, why well, didn't he almost? He made it three wide down the backstretch. But he got away with it. And he continues to hold on to the fifth spot. Ron Hornaday putting pressure on there. That 26 car on his top two. Oh, we see Casey King gets a little nudge from Randy LaJoy, and somehow. He tried to wreck for all the whole straightaway, but somehow saved it. I tell you what, I'm really high on Casey Kane. He's a young short track racer. He's won races in wing sprint cars, midgets, pavement, dirt, doesn't matter. He's a great talent, so uh, I think once he gets a little more oh, seat time. Oh, big trouble. Turn one. Two cars hard into the wall. Three cars make it. Looks like the Sauter boys. Is that 21 of Jay up there? Yes. And the 19 of Tim. And Ashton Lewis in the 46. Jay Sauter took a shot with that 21 car. The sparks were flying. Tim gets the 19 rolling. 
fourth caution of the race. And like I'll tell you at the very start, we're going to see a lot of spark flying. Sometimes they're going slow, sometimes they're going fast. Now look at the left side of Ashton Lewis's car all punched in. You see J.J. Sauter has just driven that Richard Childress 21 away. And the window net down on the Ashton Lewis car. Which is his signal to the safety workers that he is okay. That's good. It's a hard shot down there. You know, it may be a short track, but you're still doing over 100 miles an hour when you steam off into those corners with that concrete wall staring you in the face. This is the hard part, seeing where you're going with the hood up like that. Glenn? We just got a report that uh, Jay Sauter in the 21 had just radioed his crew to tell him that he had a right front tire going down uh, as he was coming down the front stretch. And uh, the guys kind of jammed up behind him and unfortunately got his brother Tim involved too. The car that Tim was driving, the number 19, was a brand new car they just tested here two weeks ago. First in-house chassis those guys had ever built was really running well. Had been in the top uh, seven or eight all night long and a uh, really bad break from the white waste that new race car. But Tim or uh, Jay Sauter had a right front tire going down started this mess. That'll do it. And you see uh, there's Tim Sauter's car. You saw the safety workers there with Ashton Lewis up inside turn number one. And Ashton has climbed from his car. There he is. Tough break. Yeah. It wrecked for a long way, too. Man. They did, didn't they? That's where it started. It's still going. Grinding along that wall all the way down there. And there we see, basically see the results of all that. Mm. I told you the sparks were flying. And all those guys can do is say, why me? Yeah. Ron Hornaday, Scott Riggs, Greg Biffle, and Jason Keller in the top five. Here goes Hornaday to the low side of McMurray for the lead. But Jamie gets a great run off of turn two. Here comes Hornaday again on the bottom slide job. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, that looked like an open wheel slide job, didn't it, Tony? Yeah, but I can promise you, I've watched Ron Hornaday enough, too. He, he's not scared to do that. He, he'll make you use both pedals in the car, the gas and the brake. Fourth different leader tonight, Hornaday. Back out in, or out in front for the first time. Biffle has led 42 laps. Jason Keller, 22. Jamie McMurray, 27. And now Hornaday has taken over the top spot, just shy of halfway. And Greg Biffle just told us when we were talking to him that he had to make these tires go the rest of the way. They're not planning to stop him anymore. So he was planning on trying to save those tires as best as he could. Second place, Scott Riggs on the move in the 10. Murray's got 50, check that, 33 more laps on his tires than these other guys he's racing with. All right, Scott Riggs makes the pass, looks like now. Is Biffle going to try on the bottom, bottom side as well? Doesn't have much choice. Here comes Riggs looking inside of Hornaday. For the lead, turn one. See if he puts a slide job on him. No, because he has not raced that much at this. Hey, Bibble's trying to go on the outside of McMurray. Oh, yeah. And Scott Riggs takes the lead in that 10 car. Ooh, McMurray slides up in front of Keller. But he moves back down just in time so they don't make contact off the corner. And ahead of them, you see Biffle trying Hornaday for second. Intensity's picked up here a little bit as we get close to halfway. Here goes Greg Biffle on the inside of Hornaday for second. He easily goes by. But again, has much fresher tires than Hornaday does in that 26 car. Now Keller 
to look for second, and John Wood in that bright green number nine. What a great run. I'm real impressed. We've watched him the whole race, and I don't think I've ever seen that car even twitch the whole time we've watched him. Got a good car. I mean, that's good equipment that he's in. There's no, no question. That's a Roush racing machine. Brad Parrott is his crew chief, but he's also doing a great job with it. You can have the best car on the racetrack, but you still have to push the pedals. You still have to use the steering wheel properly, and he's just being very, very smooth right now. Take care of it. Let's check back with Glenn. Well, guys, I've caught up with Tim Sauter. This, unfortunately, is what a brand-new race car looks like when you bring it to IRP for a Saturday night race fest, crash fest, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Tim, tough break, man. I know they built you a new car. You were running really well. What happened out there? Well, we had a really good car. It looked like uh, Jay was having a little trouble. I got up on the outside of him, and then he took off again. 46 cars on the outside of me. I tried getting out of there, hooked the 21, and turned him into the 46 and went on with him. I'm sorry about your bad luck. Are you going to be able to get back in? Uh, we're going to work on it and see what we can do. Very frustrated Tim Sauter had the best chance of a top five finish that he's had this year, guys, and now it uh, went up in smoke. Back with Tim's brother Johnny in that two car. He's racing Michael McLaughlin in the 18 for eighth, and Scott Wimmer in the 23. He's also involved in that fight. <laughs> Johnny started in 19. He ran, did he run an ASA race year? Yeah, he led 190 of the 200 laps in that race. That was his 10th win of a 10 win championship season a year ago. Brother Tim finished second in that race, by the way. The Tim that we just talked to, whose car's all torn up here tonight. A little farther back. Ricky Hendrick in the 5 and 11. And then the 33 and the 59. Tony Range and Stacey Compton, along with Todd Bodine. Remember, right at the start, Todd got spun around. He's picking his way back through the field. He's in 14th. And watching the battle for 12th and 13th. There's Jack Sprague. The net zero Chevrolet on board with him as he watches with all this going on, trying to figure out how he's going to get by the extended car of Todd Bodine. Getting back that, off that throttle off turn two. And it looked like it just got tight. It didn't, didn't really, uh, didn't see a lot of movement in the steering wheel, but you get tight here, you have to check up. You, you really push up off the corners pretty hard here. If you don't, you go to the wall. Exactly. <laughs> Murray in that 27, continuing to slip back a little bit. Here comes Kenny Wallace working on him for sixth. I tell you, you got to watch Herman here. I mean, Herman's a sleeper here. He's always, always run good in the Bush Series here. And he'll always just sneak up on you. He won't be one of those guys that in the first 100 laps will be out there leading the majority of the laps, but he'll always be sneaking around the top five, top ten, and work his way to the front. But you know what? Unfortunately, Tony, the story of Kenny Wallace's season is he's run very steadily from 6th to 12th or 13th place. They both, you know, he's got his best finish of the season is a place run at Darlington. They just not, haven't found that, that little thing to push him up into being a consistent top five car. Ralph? Well, Jamie McMurray in that 27 in car, Allen, is pretty loose coming off the corner. That's one of the reasons why he's having a hard time holding out of the position right now. They're fairly happy with their strategy. They pitted on lap 39, took four tires and fuel. They think they can pit somewhere later on and maybe just take a splash of gas to get to the finish. And now they're going to get in sixth place in that 27 car. Still trying to fend off Kenny Wallace. Ever see Rick Hendrick in the 12th position? 59 car, Stacy Compton, he's running 13. Todd Bodine and Jack Sprague in the 24. Not missing much up front. Still Riggs, Biffle, and Kelly running one, one, two, three, and got a little bit of a gap now on John Wood, the fifth place car, so that's all still static while we watch this good racing back in the pack. Jack Sprague was the driver who was hopping back and forth in the helicopter today. He ran the IROC race over at the track. Checking back in on that sixth place race. Looks like Kenny finished the pass. Oh, oh. contact! Is he going to save it? Yes, he did. But Scott Wimmer hung the left and went by the both of them. And I would almost bet that before we saw that there was some contact between the 48 and the 27. 
That was kind of a payback, you think, maybe, huh? He got in the gas pretty aggressively in the middle of the corner and pretty much went wherever Herman went. Well, let's go back and see if we can document it. All right, here we go. Oh, oh there we go. Hello, neighbor. That was coming up turn four. And yep. we'll watch him down by, th by the start-finish line. They go down turn one. And <laughs> you <laughs> notice he's going exactly where Kenny's going right here. Get uh, the little blurp right there in the throttle, and thank you. Watch Wimmer. Left turn. Goodbye. So McMurray back to eighth place now. Racing Johnny Sutter with his new car for that spot. Just behind them is Mike McLaughlin in the 18 who runs 10th. Here's Mike. Now the top three into a little bit of lap traffic here. Riggs in that blue 10 car. And Greg Biffle. That's the 7-7. Seven, seven. Jimmy Kitchens, they go by him. Ooh, Biffle looks like he's coming on now. I'm telling you, for a guy that's not very happy with his race, I'm trying to save it. He's running awful quick right now. Kenny <laughs> Wallace. Quickest car that last lap. He's wanting to get away from McMurray finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little motivation there. I'm not going to get let you get close enough to do it again. By the way, as we watch this, I'm told that Kerry Earnhardt has retired the Supercuts number 12 car with an engine problem. It's a funny sound, isn't it? I think he has an exhaust leak when he lit the flame out the exhaust pipe and when he backs off the throttle, that's just a little bit of backfiring, I think. Scott Wimmer in that 23 car. He's got a roll in here. Well, he does. He just went by Hornaday in one corner. Wimmer was over at the Brickyard today, failed to qualify for the Winston Cup race tomorrow. And I talked to Scott about that. He was disappointed, but he said, we made a lot of progress. They tested here a couple of weeks ago, and he said the car was talking about the Brickyard. He said the car was just horrible. But they came back, and they worked on the car, got it much better, failed to qualify. I said, if we just had been this good when we tested two weeks ago, then we had a chance to qualify for the Brickyard 400. Scott tonight here at IRP started in 32nd place and he has just moved into 5th. That's a great night's work. Here we see Ricky Hendrick in the 5 car trying to get by Ron Hornaday. That's about for the ninth position. Ricky Hendrick was a lap down at one point. Got it back coming to a caution flag. Started 36th, BP. Got him a top 10 run going right now. He does a terrific job tonight for Ricky. Made several pit stops, the first caution flags. And Hornaday, the caution flag is out, speaking of cautions. Got a car up against the wall in turn three. It's Bobby Hamilton Jr. Looked like he stopped. Uh, well, no, he didn't stop to bring out the yellow. He's got problems. That's a big problem right there. Yeah, big time problem. Yep. Seventh place in points, Hamilton Jr. And with only 30 laps to go in the race, chances to repair that get about time for the finish might be slow. When that right front tire doesn't roll, that's not a good sign. No. Sparks are flying at the racetrack on a Saturday night. And Biffle and the 57 car on pit road. Scott Riggs stays out. Wow, this is going to be some kind of strategy. Second and third going to come get some tires. 12 cars on the lead lap. Good call, not good call. Oh, only 30 laps to go. What do you think, Tony? I don't know. They they must not be happy with their cars, and they must think that they can make a big enough adjustment to, to get through the crowd here. But there's with only those two guys pitting, they've got a lot of race cars to pass in a short amount of time. Go ahead, Gwen. Well, Greg Biffle and Jason Keller are pitting next to each other. They both brought their cars in, and you're exactly right, Tony. They didn't like the way their cars were. They couldn't catch Scott Riggs. And so they figured they might as well roll the dice, put on four fresh tires, thinking that they could make the time back up, that they had enough time. Biffle is down and away. Four tires on Keller's car, he's down and away. Here's Ralph. 
Well, Johnny Sauter's in in the two car. They made a very slight adjustment to the air pressure in the right rear of the car just to get the car a little bit better handling. Outside of that, they're very happy with the performance of the car. Crew thrilled with the pit stop. Johnny Sauter, Ken Wallace, Ron Hornaday, Jamie McCurry. Other we have cars who came in to pit under this yellow. I applaud Keller and Biffle on this decision. I mean, I like to see guys that are aggressive. They're racing to win. They're not racing for the points. I mean, as much as they're racing each week for points, tonight, these guys want to win. They're not sitting there satisfied with running second and third or second and fourth. They're going for the win. So I applaud their decision to do this. Very, very good. That was impressive. Those guys would give up. Going for the championship would give up that track position, possibly, and get those four fresh tires and trying to win. We've just gone back under the green flag in the Kroger 200 at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Scott Riggs leads. Scott Wimmer is second. John Wood third. Tony Raines fourth. Ricky Hendrick is fifth. Those cars did not pit under the yellow. Then Greg Biffle, Jason Keller, Johnny Sauter, Kenny Wallace, Ron Hornaday, and Jamie McMurray are the rest of the lead lap cars with fresh tires. We went green with 25 to go. And I tell you what, Scott Wimmer in that 23 car is running extremely well right now. Closed up right on the back bumper of Scott Riggs in the 10. Keep an eye on Biffle and Keller trying to come through the traffic. There's Biffle all the way into the bottom of the racetrack to deal with some of the lap cars. They just made contact with the Brian Bickers number 40 cars at three wide off two. Jason Keller on the inside of three wide. Now Biffle is the next car in front of him, that 33 that he'll come up on next is the fourth place car. So Biffle's up to fifth. And you see Keller lost a little ground trying to shake through the same traffic. Biffle on range for fourth. Trouble on the back stretch. Ron Hornaday is spinning. The caution flag is out. Larry Boyd's the other car involved. This is definitely not what Biffle and, and Keller wanted to see for sure. They wanted to see this thing go where the fresh tires would come in and really get going and keep a lot of heat in Scott Riggs' car. Well, Biffle got to uh, fourth. Keller's in sixth. Yeah, Keller did not steer Tony Reigns before the yellow came out. Both cars involved in the accident have driven away. Should not be a long caution. Make, make a quick trip with one of the cleanup trucks to check for debris and see if we can see what happened. You know, all we see is a couple of cars going around making smoke. It looked like Hornaday spun. He ducked to the inside around Larry Foyt and got in the grass. On board the Net Zero onboard camera. Let's see. Wow. What you see there, Tony? Looked like the 26 just got in the left rear of the 14 from that view. Got them both sideways and drove them both to the bottom of the racetrack down the back stretch. We definitely have some damage to that right front fender, but I don't know many cars this race here tonight that don't have damage. But uh. <laughs> Yeah, I said there were 172 clean fenders at the start of the night. How many think I don't have a mark on them now? About 12? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Look at it. Kevin LePage's car. Do you actually count that as a fender or no fender now? No fender. That's no fender. So that's a damaged fender because it's sitting in a scrap in the infield somewhere. Does it have to be present to be accounted for, though? <laughs> it, it is present still. <laughs> Where? <laughs> it's in the jump pile in the infield. I'm looking at NASCAR modified right now. It does. <laughs> no, NASCAR modified is prettier than that. That's true. That is very true. Now there's one with four clean fenders. They have the tires to hold on for the win. Let's find out what his crew chief thinks. Here's Glenn. I'll ask that question, Harold Holly. Your strategy was to stay out. Your closest competitors came in, took four fresh tires. Can you hold on to that lead? I think so. Uh, we uh, Historically, what happens here is right at the end of the race, you want to be up front. Caution start popping out about every five laps, and you get your tires, get your tires to cool back down. He picked up uh, that long run there. We was running 24 flats, and he's running 2340s right there. So all we need to do is, all we need to do is just uh, keep our tires a little bit cool, and I believe we can hold them off. Well, this caution is certainly helping that. Uh, they think they can hang on, Ralph. 
Well, Glenn, earlier on, the big question for Wimmer was going to be on fuel. All these cautions are definitely helping him make it to the finish on fuel. He says if they get enough green flag laps going, he can hunt him and get him. He's not worried about it as long as they can go green. Oh, the thoughts of the crews for the top two. And you've got John Wood still doing a great job in that Roush car in third. Followed by Greg Biffle, Tony Raines, and Jason Keller. The problem is, you know, Scott Wimmer, the 23 car, is talking about needing long laps. We're only going to have about 15 laps to go in the race. You're getting one to go here, BP, at 18 to go. So the restart's going to come. Well, they get one to go at 17 to go. The restart will come at 16 to go. Okay, call me a liar for one lap, right? I'm just, ba I'm just <laughs> backing you up. Oh, big kid. Big kid. Tough crowd tonight. <laughs> All right, who's going to win it? The guys on the fresh tires or the old tires? I don't know. I'm sentimentally, I'm rooting for the guys that took Tom. tires. I'm applauding the guys that took a chance to take a, a risk of winning the race versus just staying there in second, third. I, I want to see those guys get through the pack if they can and at least race for the win here. I think the time Biffle gets by, if he can get by the nine car and 23 car, the race will be over. I can't see him passing all those cars and winning. I think the 23 car is the key to the whole thing. If he thinks he's got enough for Riggs, then and that 60 car is going to have some troubles yeah. dealing with him. That could get exciting. Maybe some more of those pristine fenders go by the wayside. All right, going to be a 16-lap shootout to the finish here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. The fans are standing up. They're waiting to see what's going to happen. Scott Riggs has got the lap car of Stacy Compton to his inside. And that's another key, too, here. Biffle has got to get through these lap cars quickly if those fresh tires hey, are going to help him. And the cars that are on the, the bottom are good quality there. cars. Be these ready. aren't any slouches on the bottom, so be it is going to be tough for him to get through the lap cars early. Be ready. Green flag, green flag. Come on, come on, come on. Great restart for Scott man, Riggs. Oh, man, oh, man. Look at that. Ten car length advantage over the 23 car. And he has clean racetrack. He doesn't have to worry about traffic. Might have just won in the race. Though, as Harold Holly, Riggs approaching said before, the yellow flag tends to wave a lot in the closing laps here. We'll see. Jason Keller underneath Tony Raines. Greg Biffle right behind John Wood. That's a battle for third spot. Okay, they're clear of all the one lap car. Just that 92 about the line is to the inside. And here goes Biffle. He's on the inside of Wood. All right, that was easy enough. Third place, 14 to go. Randy LeJoy in the setup car, and then he's on in the mix as well. That's hurting Jason Keller. Except for he just slid up in front of John Wood right there, and that may have slowed him down just enough to let Jason get by. It did. Jason Keller's gone by the nine car of Wood. So that puts Jason into fourth place. Try to deal with the lap car of Randy LeJoy here. Randy is in 13th place. Second car a lap yeah. down. Greg Biffle catching Scott Wimmer for second. They're by the lap car of Bodine. Twelve laps to go. There goes Biffle to the inside. Oh, man. Guys, we got us a race now. Yes, sir. Got the fender on him. Up to the door. Put the slide job on him. Not quite yet. Oh, man. Tried to pull up in front of him and does get up in front. And the 10 car all of a sudden just doesn't seem to have the speed. Here comes fresh tires, Superman, Greg Biffle. Inside for the lead. They're coming to 10 laps to go. And we see 57. He's on the inside of 23. Who's trying to get on the inside of 10? Greg Biffle to the race lead. And Wimmer goes to second spot in the 23 car. 10 cars handling is just falling off. Here comes Keller for second. It's like the 10 car has a flat tire. Keller can't mess around with Wimmer for long if he's going to have a shot at Biffle. He's got to get by him fast. But Scott Wimmer in that 23 is just not getting up. He's staying out there on the outside. 
will not have him this time. Let's see. No, not quite. Oh, Wimmer drove that thing in there on the outside. Now he's got it, but he can't slide up. I think he's got him off four. So Keller clears Wimmer for second with eight laps to go. Right rear tire split. You're right, Tony. Ralph, is that right? That's it exactly, Alan. Good guess, Tony. I said it, but Tony pointed the right rear and, and made the motion that the tire was flat, and you're right. Heartbreak. Oh, man. Scott Beaks led 93 laps to the night. That's almost half the race. It's fading back into the pack at the finish. Rain's going by him here for sixth. Kenny Wallace for seventh. Jamie McClung for eighth. Ricky Hendrick for ninth. That's a heartbreak because that car was so good for so long tonight. He took really good care of it. And must have run over something there to cut that tire down. Because it is on the right rear, and I didn't. I don't. He did not make contact with anyone, so it was just debris that he ran over and punctured the tire. By the way, so much for the good luck NASCAR sand picture. Yeah. The next pit box tonight, Tony. So much for the picture. I'm still going with it. That's okay. how it's got <laughs> to win. Sometimes you got to freshen him up once in a while, but I got a fresh picture today from him, so I think it'll work. Sixth place. But look at this, Jason Keller, the 57, right on the back bumper of Biffle for the win. Last time by, Keller a mile per hour faster. Then Biffle. Biffle caught the lap car at just the wrong place there, too. Here comes Keller, four laps to go. Catching him and passing him. As the saying goes, two different things, but... Now you get up there and start carving. Heck with those fenders now. It's not a show car anymore. <laughs> Biffle has been running that high line all night. Keller has been in running much lower. Will these new tires align the stick down there? He was faster that time. Closing right on the back bumper of Biffle. Three laps to go. Here he comes. Boy, he gets right through the center of the corner. Much Everyone on their feet at Indianapolis Raceway Park. The top two in the NASCAR Bush Series Championship. Racing for the win on a Saturday night short track. Keller looking low. Can't quite get there. Two laps to go. Lap traffic there. Larry Foyt's car, he gets out of the way. They'll come to the white flag this time. There'll be more traffic the leaders will deal with before they get the checkers. Keller looking low. Here he comes to the inside. Can he pull up alongside? White flag is out. Not yet. Biffle's still holding on. And that time Biffle went to the bottom of the racetrack and blocked Keller. Is he going to bump him? Half a lap to go. Keller, one final shot at three and four. Clear racetrack. Let's see if he can put the slide job on him. Looking inside. Final corner. Not going to be enough. Greg Biffle wins at IRP. What a great finish. Great run for Scott Wimmer to finish third. Johnny Sauter, good fourth place run. Those 10 cars plus Scott Riggs finishing on the lead lap. How about it for Greg Biffle? His fourth win of 2002, all coming in the last nine races. Well, it's, they're not fresh tires anymore now. <laughs> no. Better remember to leave some rubber on there. Remember St. Louis and the technical inspection issue a couple of weeks ago? Thrilling race tonight here at IRP. Greg Biffle is in victory lane. Here's Glenn Jarrett. And he's getting a beer shower. A well-deserved one at that. And he's getting another water shower. Come on down here, Greg. Great job. It was really tight here at the end, but what a great call by your crew chief, Randy Goss, to get those four fresh good here. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a decision. Uh, you know, I saw Keller coming behind us. I thought we should come. And uh, great call on everybody's part. Great job in the pits. Uh, Jason had a really good car tonight. But uh, just... You know, we got really good track position, and the Granger Ford just ran really good. Uh, just like to say hi to Cole, my mom and everybody at home, and uh, my fishing buddy, Gerald. Congratulations. Go down those guys for me, will you? Here's Ralph Shaheen. All right, we're with Jason Keller, who's out of the car and sitting in the wall after a hot night. Jason, tell me about that battle in the closing laps. Just tried all we could do. Uh, you know, track position was everything. It just seemed like we just couldn't get the, get the right track position. Uh, 
Final standings tonight of the Kroger NASCAR 200. Greg Biffle with his fourth win of the year. He and Keller, again, kind of dueling to a draw in the points tonight, which works in Biffle's favor. While we look at the final results, final thoughts, Tony. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the, the Home Depot Pontiac. The guys did a great job. Uh, we've been having great pit stops, so I'm hoping we get good track position all day tomorrow and keep the balance good. And uh, you know, I'm, I hope Bill gets some sleep tonight. I hope he's not too worried about that first corner tomorrow. <laughs> and I, just, I just hope the end of the Brickyard 400 is exci as exciting as the end of this race tonight. All right. We'll I just want to give the two guys, first and second there, I want to give them a big attaboy. Those are the guys that came in, got their tires, got out there, made me look like a hero tonight because I love rooting for the guys that come in and take a gamble like that. Tony, thanks. We'll do this again at Michigan. I love this race. Looking right? forward to it again. Okay. Good luck tomorrow, BP. Can't wait to bring the 400 to everyone tomorrow. Man, me too. I'm pumped. It's going to be great.